Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, just close your eyes right now. Jesus. And just focus on him. The reason why you're here this morning. Just begin to thank him wherever you are. Don't allow yourself to get distracted. And just open your mouth and begin to worship him. In your language, in tongues, just exalt him this morning. We thank you, Jesus. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. Begin to bless the name of the Lord this morning. Come on, somebody. I need to hear you worship him this morning. Worship him this morning. Worship him this morning. Honor Jesus this morning. Exalt Jesus this morning. Magnify him this morning. Honor him this morning. Adore him this morning. Lift him higher this morning. Make him bigger this morning. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, declare hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 somebody declare in this place, hallelujah, hallelujah, we sing hallelujah. Jesus. <laughs> 
Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Telling God, indeed, Father, there is none, 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 there is none. As you are waving to heaven this morning, you are declaring His Lordship this morning. You are declaring His Lordship this morning. As you are waving to heaven this morning, yes. Thank you, Spirit of the Living God. We bless you. We appreciate you, oh God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Can we put our hands together for the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Church, without wasting time, turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, say, this is the hour. And this is the time. That my father... I don't know about you, say, but my father wants to talk to me. So I want to pay attention. Please. Hallelujah. Church, without wasting time, put your hands together as you welcome the Reverend 
Christian Sebastian Fall, the one and one and voice, and you can do better than this. Hallelujah. Better than that, can you give Master Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, uh, you can give him a shout offering as well. Oh, you can give him a shout offering as well. Oh, we can give him a shout offering. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Since God created the earth, since he created the sun, there has never been no repair at all. Have you thought about that? I don't know how many times Dan and the others have changed bulbs in this place. But since God created the sun, there has never been any repair. Oh, I thought somebody would give this God, this Master Jesus. Now, the other day I was praying outside. I like to pray out a lot. In the morning between three, two, outside alone. And I was looking at God's handiwork. And one of the things that amazed me, that he spoke to me about, we all live by oxygen, true or false. But maybe ever since God created the oxygen for us to use, we have never run, run short, short of it. Oh my God. Never has anybody run out of oxygen. Look out how many billions are on planet Earth. And the other thing he told me, look at the oxygen I created. Different from the oxygen you use at home. That oxygen is in a container. The moment you open it, you, you see what is going to happen to you. But look at the gas God created for us. We are using it is harmless. Oh, I told somebody we shout and jump. And Pastor P, the same oxygen that they are using in the White House is the same oxygen my partner in the village is using. And nobody pays for it. Oh, I told somebody we shout. Hey! The same the handiwork of God. Thy handiworks shall praise your name. So, one. I want you to think of your handiworks. Your, your handiworks. Shall remember you are God's handiwork as well. It is time for you to praise Him. Your handiwork, your, your hand. If you know you are alive, you know your heart is beating. You know the Lord created you. So wonderful. worship you because we did not make ourselves so one more time Worshiping, 
so wonderful, so beautiful. So what amazing God! Your hand, your hand, He works. We want to praise. We praise Your name. So. If you know you are alive, I want you to sing with me. Your hand in me. Hand in your hand in words. Your hand in words. was driving from exit 20 to this place. Now, what is holding the heaven? Now, look at, look at this building alone. Now, without this pillar, look at how many pillars are here. Supporting just this small building. But you can drive from here to New York. You will never say a pillar. Hold, oh my God. That is the many-sided wisdom of God. What is holding it? It is the word of his power. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lift your hands to heaven. Ha, halle, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Ha. Choir, help me to sing this song unto him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
to bring him back his worship. God created everything for our pleasure. He doesn't use it at all. But remember, he created you now to bring him his pleasure. Hallelujah. Wow. We want to just... That's why when we come to church, there's a demand on the church 
for everything. Clap, shout, jump, stand on your feet. So now, with a humble appeal, can we stand on our feet? You know why we want to acknowledge the one God has brought into our lives? All the way from Kumasi had a vision and God says that vision will not just be for his family. It will not just be for Kumasi or Ghana. That vision is going all around. Delivering people, healing people, setting people free, breaking curses, destroying caskets. Now with a clap offering, can we acknowledge and welcome the prophet of God and his family, Mami V is in the house. Hey, can you shout and just hallelujah? Wow. The Lord sent just one word to one man called Prophet Ranjumo Sapon. And look at the look, look at the flags. And that word has lighted upon look at look at the nations. Put your hands together for that people of God. That word to bring hope to the hopeless. Mommy V, we salute you. We appreciate you. Prophet, we know you are somewhere else ministering, delivering people. We salute you. Can you put your hands together? Now we want to also just acknowledge this great men and women of God that God is using in this end time. To fulfill the dream of our papa. Can you just welcome the pastors? Look at the pastors we have in the house. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now what about our leaders and our board members? Can we acknowledge them? They are doing an awesome job. God bless you. Guess what? You too, you are special to God. People of God, can we put our hands together for these precious ones? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And let us not forget those who are watching with us. Can we give them a shout of him? Hallelujah! God bless you. You may take your seats. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. We want to go to the book of Psalm 142. Last Friday, we just saw from verse 3 what the enemy is doing in the life of God's people. Psalm 142. But this time, We want to focus on the last verse. The last verse. But there is a song for the first verse. Every time you turn your situation around, whatever situation you are going through, God will turn your life around for the better. In verse 1 of this, one of David's um, cage um, psalms, you know, God used David so mightily that the enemy was after David's life. To a point, he drove David out of his mansion. And David now was just going from cave to cave, hiding from his enemies. And this Psalm 142 is one of David's cave psalms. But verse 1, we are going to concentrate on verse 7. Has a song. Because of my voice. You know, you can excuse me. Because David said we should make a joyful noise. He didn't say a melodious. So today, if you don't see that melody in my voice, 
Because the Bible says we should make, it says make a joyful noise. But Psalm 142, David prayed unto the Lord with his voice. And in the cave, with his voice, he made his supplication unto God. And God delivered him. Hannah also prayed unto the Lord with her voice. Do you know it's good when Mami V prays for us? Do you know it's good when Pastor P does deliverance for us? Do you know when prophet pray and release it's good? But do you know at times God wants not to hear their voice, he wants to hear your own voice? So that your voice will be recorded in heaven. So David remembered that and he said, David prayed unto the Lord with his voice. David prayed unto the Lord with his voice. With his voice, he made his supplications. Hmm. David prayed unto the Lord with his voice. Hey. Hannah prayed unto the Lord with her voice. With her voice. Hannah prayed unto the Lord with her voice. Oh, with her she made her softly. Hannah prayed unto the Lord. Now, what about you? I would pray unto the Lord with my. How many wants to do that this morning? I will pray. I will pray unto the Lord with my voice. Jesus and with my voice, I will make my supplication. Jesus. you to sing it as if you mean it. I will pray because my situation that I'm going through with your voice and with my voice I will make my supplication my supplication one more time Why the church came this morning? And the Lord oh, yeah. with my Oh yes, and with my This morning I will make my supplication. I will pray unto the Lord with my verse 7. Let us look at verse 7. Why David had to pray unto the Lord? Why David had to sing unto the Lord? Why is it at times when we come, you don't even want to sing? But remember, you went to bed with so many people, and this morning they are in the mall, and this morning they are on life support. You don't need Alfred to pump you to praise God. You don't need the praise and worship to be there before you can dance, before you can sing. Look at verse 7. Huh. Verse 7 is saying, Bring my soul out of what? That what? Let's go back to that phrase. The line one and line two. Bring my soul out of prison. That's what? That I may praise your name. Somebody say, hey. I, 
are you alive? Somebody say, hey. Yeah. Now how come the praise and worship like Alfred, like every one of them, they are praise singers. They are worshippers. But why is it now that they are saying, God, bring my soul. I want to praise you, but I can't because I am in a bad situation. I want to come and jump like how brother Howard would do, but financially, I am in prison. I want to sing. I want to video, but I cannot go to church. You know why? Every time you are in a cave. You cannot praise God fully. Anytime you are in a financial situation, you cannot praise God fully. Anytime your business that was booming is coming down at an alarming rate, it will affect your soul. It will affect your body. And you cannot praise God fully. Do you understand what I'm saying? This man that was after God's own heart, Brother Alfred, the man that used to play for Saul and to what? To bring this because Saul's soul was afflicted. They will call on this man and he will sing and he will play and Saul will be delivered. But how come Verse 7 is saying, I want to come to church, but the economic situation. I want to sing. I want to serve in the church, but my spirit is down. So it means that there are things that can cause your spirit, that can cause your soul to be down. There are things that can happen to our soul, including me. There are things. One, your soul can be down. That's why the songwriter says, he is the lifter up of my soul. It means there are things that can happen to you. There are things that can happen at your work. There are things that can happen even in your family. When things are not working, your soul will be down. Not only that, there are things that can also happen to your soul. Your soul can be afflicted. Afflicted soul cannot fully worship God. The way God commanded it. Because if we have, they say, if you worship me in spirit and in truth, it means if there are true worshippers, that means there are also false worshippers. Somebody told me and Pastor Abdul, the person is, he comes here, but he's not here right now. They say, Pastor Chris, they say, most of the time when I come to church, they say, I'm just singing. Because I want to please the, the people. He said, but in my spirit, my soul. He said, I will just be standing there. Pastor Abdul, am I lying? Yeah. There are things that can happen to you. It can affect your soul. Your soul can be afflicted. And your soul also can be grieved. True or false? It's in the Bible. I have scriptures, but I want to make sure we finish on time because we are going to take communion. Your spirit, now the Bible is saying, is in prison. You know why David's soul was in prison? Because there was an enemy called the Saul that was chasing him out of his palace. And God wants me to tell somebody, any soul in your life, any soul in your family, any soul in
in your neighborhood, any soul in your community that does not want you to praise God, that does not want you to worship God, that does not want you to give you and lift your hands to God. Today, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord will chase your soul out. The Lord will chase any king out. The Lord will chase any queen. Saul was David's enemy. Saul, that David saved his life through plane. And now he wants to put an end to God's master plan for David. If it happened to David, let me tell you something. I came to church Friday. And guess what? Somebody sitting here was weeping. Meaning that person's soul was in torment. Now you can cry out there. You can cry wide. But for somebody to come in God's house and cry. That person was like David. That the enemy has put him or her in a confinement. Oh my God. When you are in prison, you can only go this far. When you are in prison, you cannot jump like how brother Howard jumped in the church. When you are in prison, you are in a confinement that you cannot do what you do outside. And that is what the enemy is doing in God's people. With God's people. Maybe you are here you are not like David. But maybe your business is in a cave. Today, that is not the best place for God for you to be. Oh, you did not hear me. Now, David was a king living in a palace. But how come now he's in a cave? Tell your neighbor that from today, any cave situation... Any prison situation in your life, tell that person you are coming out because you want to come and praise God. Tell the one beside you, say, you are coming out. I came to announce to you any kind of confinement the enemy wants to preach you so you will not dance, so you will not sing, so you will not praise God. I came to announce to you any lock, any bad luck they have put on you and put you in a confinement, you are coming out. David said it. I really want to preach. But I can't. Because of my condition. Yes, I want to go into the accounting ministry. But I can't. Because my manager is not managing me. He is damaging me. There are some managers. Instead of to manage, they are damaging. damaging. And I want to announce to you. The one that is supposed to manage you and damage you. May the fire from above, may the thunder of God strike anyone in the mighty name of Jesus. Bring my soul out of prison so that I will go to restoration. Show me a man who is shouting and praising. I will show you a man who has liberty and freedom. Show me a man who is excited in the things of God. I will show you somebody that has liberation. Show me somebody. Bring my soul out of prison. And I came to tell somebody today, I don't know what they have buried in your life that is in a hole, that is in a cave. Anything that time is attached to and dead, that date, that time will expire. Amen. Oh. Amen. Meaning, it was a particular day that Saul drove David out of the palace. It means anything that Time is attached to and dead will expire. Meaning 
listening today, as you're under the sound of my voice, and maybe you are somewhere watching, and your business is in a cave, and your child is in a prison on drugs, and your life is going some kind of way, I came to announce to you, it will go God's way. It will go God's way in the mighty name of Jesus. God is going to take you out of your prison. Tell somebody, say, I am coming out today. Say, I don't know about you, but I am coming out today. And I see God taking somebody out of any prison, out of your cave, out of that tears and weeping situation. Say your neighbor, say, I am coming out today. <laughs> it was just one day that Saul decided to take David out of the palace. Look at Exodus chapter 12. We are going to come back to this. Exodus chapter 12. And look at the last verse. I don't know why God gave me this. But there are some people. They are in prison. They cannot move the way they want to. But today. That prison gate is going to catch fire. But today, that prison door is going to open wide. But today, that key is going to be on fire. Look at verse 51. Look at verse 51. Wow. Look at it. Look at verse 51. Anything that has time Attach to it in your life. It's just temporary. Meaning it doesn't matter what people are saying about me. I am going through my season. There is a reason for every season. And every season is not permanent. And I came to announce to you. Your season of prison. Your season of disappointment. Today it is going to end. Can somebody stand and say thank you Jesus. No, if you want your prison door to open, say thank you, Jesus. Say, I am coming out today. Say, my business is coming out today. Say, my children, they are coming out. Ah. <laughs> Look at it now. Thank you. You may take your seat. And it came to pass. Hey, the same, same. Sunday, that Pastor Preach was preaching. Oh my God. That's why God gave me this message. Meaning, it is going to come to pass in somebody's life. That your life has been just going around the circle. God says, that day that they put you in that thing, he is going to set you free. And it came to pass the self same day. That the Lord did bring restoration out. Can somebody say, I am coming out today? Can you go to somebody and slap that person that you are coming out? I don't care the cave you are in. I don't care the life you are living. You are coming. And it came to pass. I like that word. In fact, when I gave my life, that was the first message God gave me. Go through the Bible. It came to pass. It came to pass in the life of these people. And I was sitting there and the Lord told me, if it came to pass in the life of somebody in the Bible, you are next in line. Amen. You know why it came to pass? It did not come to stay. Poverty did not come to stay. Bad luck did not come to stay. That sickness did not come to stay. Your situation you are going through did not come to stay. It will come to... Ah. It will come to pass. <laughs> I went to, to bless somebody's house in Bowie. I got there. At times God will tell me what to do. I learned this from the prophet of God. While I was blessing, anointing the place, and the Lord told me to ask for their key. 
I went there just to, why am I asking for a key? And I say, you have the key to this house? And they say, yes. I said, give it to me. You know, even though you have a key to your car, you can lock your key in. And the police have the master key. Oh my God. Your house or your apartment, you can lock yourself out. And you call the rental office. They will come because they have what? The master key. And do you know Jesus is the supernatural master key holder that we unlock those that we unlock your breakthrough. Your breakthrough has been kept in a cell. But I came to announce to you, you are going to witness your breakthrough. You are going to have testimony. You are going to sing in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. So I lifted the key. To God, I said, God, may this key produce other keys. <laughs> God has given us power in our mouths. He said, life and death are in your tongue. I lifted it to heaven and I gave it to them. I anointed the key and I came. Three hours later or two hours, Text messages come, not knowing that they are calling me. I'm not getting the message. I look at my phone. Pastor Chris, Pastor Chris, please call us. Pastor Chris, you, you brought a key business. And now, now, can you imagine more than two people living all the way in the outskirts? But you only have one way to come to church or to go to work. Now, I didn't know that. But when I got there, the Spirit told me to ask for the key. So, the text they were sending me, he said, do you know we only had one car? You left this place. Another key has come. Oh my God. I said, they only had one key. And when I spoke, the Lord miraculously brought another key. I came to announce to you, you are coming out of setback. And God is going to hand you your key. Your key to prosperity. Your key to progress. Your key for promotion and elevation. As I'm talking... The people are here. God is my witness and they are hearing. There was a time I went to my niece. They had a small place. At back home we called it matches box place. You know place where we, the, the bathroom, the this, the this, everything is, we call it, the moment you open a matchbox, you don't have more room, you just so, <laughs> they said, they want to do, I think I went there, yeah, I, they, they, they wanted me to go and bless their business. They started in that small place. So, I got there another time. Pastor Abdul knows about that. We have been to the place. And the Lord told me to ask for the key of that place. And I said, where is the key to this place? And they brought the key. And I lifted it to heaven. I didn't lift it to me. I lifted it to heaven. Because he has the key of life and death. Amen. And guess what happened? I even forgot about it. They go to another church, but they have come here, I think, two times. My ordination and about three months ago. So, <laughs> brother Alfred, they caught like a football field. Now me that bless them, I'm living in. They caught a football place. And this person is not a professor. And this person is not a doctor. You know, favor is like a wind. Oh my God. You know, favor is like a wind. It can blow anywhere God wants it to go. It can touch any chair you are sitting on. It does not matter your background. Favor is like a wind. 
Now, they wanted to, is it housewarming or something? And they said, no, no, no. We are not going to call our pastor. They have the senior pastor. God of life. They said, I'm not going to call. They said, the one who spoke and we got this place, we need to let him know. And I went to that place. Hmm, like a soccer field. But what am I saying this? If God did it for them, if God did it for somebody that just about a week or two in Pui, today is your turn. Today is your day. This day, this self same day, the Lord delivered the children of Israel. You are next in line for a miracle. You are next in line for a breakthrough. I came to announce to you, you are next in line. Can somebody say amen? amen. Bring my soul out of prison because I have a lot to do for God. When my soul is in prison, that's why Friday I told the Lord, I was in the car, they said I have five bread. I said, me, if I have five bread, who is going to come and preach? Who is going to teach Bible? God is hearing. That was what I told the Lord. You should always have something to take to God when you are speaking. I look at the letter. They couldn't show it. So when I came this morning, brother, Dwayne gave it to me. Mommy v, this was my other phone. That I have. I know that women, they go for But how comes the devil wants to give me five bread? <laughs> and I said, no way. May you go to the next address. And it went to the next address. Oh, I came to announce to you. You saw it, Mommy v. You saw it. They, they said, you know, doctors... Fibroid, they will make it so big. Look at it. They say, probe into whatever fibrosis and cyst. Cyst is a kind of cancer. I look at it. <laughs> I say, minus me, you better go to the next address. Because I have to come. Bring my soul out of what? Fibroid. Because I want to come and preach. And the God that did it for me, we do it for somebody. I cause any fibroid. I cause any cancer. I cause any kind of sickness. Look at it. To the next address. And he went there. To the next address. Now, it was 2000. And 11 October, no, August 23. Guess what? I will never forget when I brought it. Look at what Pastor Sidel wrote as the Lord God of Israel. So you leave it before whom I stand. There shall not be any sickness in this Pastor C wrote at the back. Oh, can you can I, can I hear hallelujah? Can I hear hallelujah? <laughs> now, imagine some people know how to buy sickness. Imagine <laughs> if I was in that place and the doctor is telling me, you have cancer. The moment you say, oh, you have to skip, bam! Then you begin to say, cancer, cancer. You are saying, hospital, hospital, cancer. <laughs> the moment like, hospital, hospital because you are saying the moment it came with my fear that I reverse it and up to today you know why God brought my soul out of prison so that I will preach his word so that I will declare this is what the Lord said I came to announce to you any kind of prison any kind of care your soul has put you you are coming out you are coming out you are coming out your business is coming out your life is coming out I don't know how, which route it took, but I don't know the U-turn, but I just said, go, not, not this place. Go and find somewhere. And that thing went there. <laughs> Jesus.
Jesus. You know why the Lord did that for me? Because like David, he said, I want to come back to church. I want to write a new song. There are some of you, God has given you a gift. God wants you to come and share your gifts. God wants you to join this ministry and be in one of the departments. So that when something happens, you say, ah, devil, excuse me, I need to go to church. I need to be in the ushery. And you are, and the devil will hear you. Oh, put your hands together for the Lord. Can you imagine from palace, the man is in prison, locked up there by the enemy. I want to tell somebody, the place the devil has put you, that is not the best place God has for you. Let me say that again. That place the devil is taking you or has taken you already, that is not the best place God has for you. Amen. You are coming out. Amen. You know what? Let's go to Job. Go to Job. <laughs> the man that used to play, sing, now he said, until you bring me out, I will not praise you. Look at Job 36. We want to look at <laughs> verse 5 and verse 6. <laughs> now when we talk about Job, when Job speaks, you need to pay attention. Because <laughs> what you are going through, but what Job went through, and Obama will say it doesn't even come close. It's all, no, it doesn't come close at all. So if Job is speaking, you need to pay attention. He's saying something today that that cage, that hole that your business is in is not the right place to you, for you to live. In verse 5, the reason why I tell, told you that you are going to come out, because the one who is mighty, say, behold, God is what? Oh, Slap somebody and say, my God is mighty. My God is mighty. Slap somebody again and tell them, the God of restoration is mighty. God of restoration is mighty. Now, the reason why Job is saying this, he's giving you God's resume. You know when you are writing an application, you want to put your, your resume together, right? Hey, Sam, Sam, am I right? When you back home we call it CV, right? You put your CV together. So Job is telling you if you are in prison, one of God's resume is that your God you came to is mighty. Let me come to the choir. I came to tell you that any kind of prison you are in, nobody will deliver you. Nobody will take you out. The God who is mighty is able to deliver you. If you believe that, say amen. He said, remember, if you are in a cave and Saul is after you, he said, when you know that the God you came to is mighty, he said, behold, God is mighty and despised not any. Mighty in strength and in wisdom. Hey, Bumi, I came to tell you what your God has planned for you to do. Because your God is mighty, you are going to accomplish it. Whatever the enemy has planned, it will not stand. Because on Friday we realized that God took an oath that his purpose for you will surely come to mighty in strength and in hope. It's the next verse. Look at what it says. <laughs> he preserved not the life. Hey, the ones that are after you, let them be careful. Oh. Because very soon we are going to go to their funeral. The one in your village that is seeking your soul. Or seeking the life of your children. Let them be careful. Because he preserved not the life of the wicked. So this is a warning to the church. 
Can you look at someone and say, don't be wicked, please? <laughs> if you have been wicked before, you better change. <laughs> because the word of God is the final. He said, he preserveth not the life of the wicked. Oh my God. <laughs> it means those that are after my life, those that are after your life, God says he will not preserve them. Some of them, they will not see the end of this year. I speak as God's servant. This year we see their end. I came to announce to you anyone that wants you in a cave, anyone that wants you to cry, anyone that wants you to be weeping and sorrowing, God will not preserve their lives. God will not preserve their lives. Anyone after the life of the prophet of God that God is using such a unique gift, God will not preserve their life. No, I'm not a printing press. That's what it says. The word of God just said it. You can go with this to God. Anyone that does not want you to come and shake and dance as you used to do, may the finger of God, may the hand of God, may the fire of God locate them, locate them, locate them, and them into ashes. You know the part I like is the last phrase. <laughs> Look at the last phrase. He preserved not the life of what? But what? So it is your right to come out of prison. Oh my God. It is your right to prosper. It is your right to excel. Oh, let me come to, let me, Jason, it is your right to be in honor roll. Oh, can somebody say, it is my right. Say, this is my right. Say, I am coming out. Oh, tell somebody, say, it's your right. Go to somebody. Say, it is your right to prosper. Say, it is your right to excel. It is your right. You are going to be next in line for a testimony because it is our Okay, so if it is my right, it means by all means, it is my right me, me too to have a ring. Yes, by all means, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it is my right. It means somebody that the enemy has locked your womb. It is your right to give birth. Oh, I said it is your right to deliver. It is your right for that promotion. <laughs> it is my right. I don't care what you say. It is my right. <laughs> it is my right. Can you tell somebody, say it is my right. Say I am coming out today. <laughs> say every prison door. It's going to open because it is my right. I came to announce to you. I came to announce to you. This year, God will give you a new womb because it is your right to deliver. It is your right to have a child. It is your right. Somebody say, it is my right. Now, break that cycle. Go to somebody. When we say, Talk to somebody. Go to five people that you have not shaken. Say it is your right to put an end to weeping. Go, go to them. It is, you say something. It is your right to live long. It is your right to excel. It is your right. 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 It is my right. Yes, sir. Speak it. It is your right. <laughs> no more weeping. It is your right. No more crying. It is your right. <laughs> yeah. It is 
and to live long. And the enemy wanted me to die untimely. But it is my right to preach. Uh, <laughs> it is my right to have the mic. <laughs> and the devil said, no way. God said, no, I am the way because it is mine. <laughs> if I were you, I will put by God's permission my name that it is my right to be next in line for a testimony. Oh, somebody to catch that one. Say, I received that. Say, I received that. I came to announce to somebody, it is your right. Christina, it is your right. For being joyful, it is your right. It is my right and it is our Oh, can you give Master Jesus? <laughs> hey, Pastor Abdul, it is your right to shout. It is your right. <laughs> it is your right to come here and give kiss to people and say this is oh my god say can you tell somebody say that one is for me say it is my right tell somebody that one is for me that one is for me it is my right i will be next in line you are watching it is your right you will be next in line for a testimony hey it is your right it is my right i don't care what the devil does it is my right it is my right. <laughs> my God. Yes. He preserved not in the life of that witch. <laughs> Some witches, they are going to tie home because that is the word of God. Some occult people that have your picture, they are going to die. Oh, oh some alpha men that are after you, they are going to die. Oh, because God says he preserved not the life of the wicked. Oh God, he preserved not. <laughs> but give it right. Hallelujah. Somebody under the sound of my voice, you are going to be next in line for a testimony. Yeah. Say, I received that. I received Say, it. because it is my right. As God has said it. And I speak over business people. This year you will testify. This year your business is going to be on top of the mountain. This year God is going to make you a showcase. I came to announce to you, it is your right. It is your right. It is your You know, we have been watching what happened to the soul of man. But I have a good news for you. <laughs> Third John. Third John chapter 2. Third John. Go from the back of, <laughs> from Revelation backwards. You will see Third John. <laughs> Third John. Why is it your right? You are going to see it. When God speaks, you will find it in the world. <laughs> Third John 2. Yes. Nobody in the media. Third John verse 2. Third John chapter 2, right? Verse 2. What does it say? Huh? Aha. Uh -huh. Beloved, what? Hey, no, no, no. Are you? That is the word of God. You know that the word of God has life. Yeah. Remember, as you speak it, it it's a two edged word. Do you know it's more powerful than Pentagon? Yeah. So when you are speaking, speak it with meaning. What does it say? Beloved, Beloved. in other words, restoration members under the sound of my voice. Look at what God is saying about you. Yes. Now, what does above all means? Top priority. 
Hey, Brother Alfred, this is what God is saying about you. Oh my God. Brother Dwayne, this is what God is saying about you. God loves you so much that he has, you are on paramount, paramount. He said, beloved, I wish above all things that you with what? And what? Even what? Oh, the soul that was in prison, I see that soul prospering now. I see that soul coming out. I see you waving your hanky and thanking Jesus. If you have your hanky, can you stand on your feet that God, it is my right to prosper. Can you say that to God? Can you wave it to God? Say, it is my right. It is our right. It is your right. Mandala Boko Sotoyo. It is your right. You will excel. You will prosper. My God, it is your right. That prophetic word will come to pass because it is for you. It is your. I want you to finish for me. Right. That, that prophetic word concerning your life will come to pass because it is your <laughs> sickness is going to leave somebody's body because it is you don't need to have sickness it says you should live in good health and even as your soul prosper and God is telling me to tell somebody any soul that has been caged you are loose to come to God and serve him. Can you imagine God is putting priority? But we are all shouting. We are all waving hanky. He said, beloved. Let me go back to that. Beloved. Not everybody that comes to church is a born again. <laughs> we are all come, we can come. We have Churchify people, but we don't have sanctified people. <laughs> we can come to a miracle service and receive. That is temporal. Until a life is given to him, your soul will be in hell. Your soul will be in hell. You can enjoy temporal things on this planet earth. But if that life is not committed to God, given to God, you will not be part of it. And before I close, maybe you have been coming to church. Maybe somebody told you about what God is doing in this church and you came here today. God knew that you would be here under the sound of my voice. And God wants you to have a relationship with him. Until your life is given to him. Your miracle has not begun. One great man of God said, Say you are if you are not safe, say you are not safe. So maybe you are here. You are not safe, and you think you are safe. You are not. And Jesus wants me to extend this invitation to somebody. Don't be proud. Don't be proud. Because pride goeth way before destruction. If you have not made it right with him, you are just shouting, it is my right. But Jesus will come and say, who are you? I know you not. You don't want that day to stand before the king and you are scratching your head. He wants you to make it right this morning. Maybe, yes, you gave your life. But something happened. It always happened. It happened to me. You are in the pond today, out of the pond. You want to make it right and be committed. Maybe somebody is here. God will deliver you. He has set you free. That cave that you have been in, 
But remember, he wants you to have a fellowship with him. If you know that you don't have a relationship with this Jesus, the mighty God, who preserved not the life of that, those that are after you. I want you to stand on your feet. If this morning, you say, indeed, Pastor Chris, you are talking to me. Yes, I come to church, but I don't have a relationship. I go to my church just because of what? But I don't have a relationship. And this morning, you want to come to him. His arms are open wide. His arms are open wide. If you know you are one of them, can you stand on your feet and boldly come to Jesus? Oh my God. Jesus. Welcome to the family of Jesus Christ. Wow. Wow. Jesus. It is your right to make it to heaven. It is your right to stand and say, I know Jesus. And today is your day. Oh, people of God, let's stand on our feet. A member of our family has tried. Christ is coming. Hallelujah. Christ is coming. Christ, Christ is coming. Sing with me. Christ is coming. Christ, Christ is coming. Christ is coming. Christ is coming. One more time. Christ is coming. Christ is coming. Oh yes, Christ is coming. 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 Listen to this. deny you. You want to join our brother? Maybe you are not ready at his coming. What a glorious moment today. Do you know that we thank God for all the shouting, we thank God for all the breakthrough that you have come in, but the greatest miracle is what is happening. Oh my God. Even if nobody receives a miracle, what God has done, I am fulfilled. 
Because only with this miracle, do you know what is happening now? Angels are going around making party for this, our brother. Finally, I'm going to ask again. If you do not know him as your Lord and Savior. (laughs) Pastor Peter is here. Pastor Peter, how many minutes did it take for you to give your life? When when better? Oh, you see that? He was very proud when he was not born again. He didn't want to come. He went to the bathroom. He said, I'm not going to... Is that not what you did? <laughs> 45 minutes. And the preacher was not knowing that God wanted. Now look at what God is doing in his life. Look at how many people he has saved. Look at how many people. <laughs> I'm closing. But you know that you know that you don't know him. Come forward, please. The Holy Spirit is waiting for you. The angel of God is waiting for you. Father, we thank you. And brother, lift your hands to heaven. People of God, stretch forth your hand. God wants to do something spiritually first. Before any chain be broken. I want you to repeat after me, my brother. Say, Father. In the name of Jesus. By your great power. I have come to you. From today, Lord. I renounce. Every cross. Every sin. In my life. That I have committed. Knowingly or unknowingly, consciously or unconsciously, intentionally or unintentionally, today, forgive me of that sin. Sins I committed in thought, in word, and in action. Sins committed and sins omitted. Have mercy from today, Lord. I accept you as Lord and Savior. From today, be Lord over my life. In the name of Jesus, I will serve you. I will serve you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Hey, church, I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah! Father, we commit our brother. He has just come into your family. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you have delivered him. You have saved him. And because of that, we commit his life. We commit his life. Whatever we commit in your hands, you are able to keep. Keep our brother until Jesus comes. We bless you. We give you praise and thanks. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say welcome to the family of Jesus Christ. Please. After service. Pastor, eh? Oh, you, Pastor P, can you? Yeah. He's going to share some things with you. And it will bless your heart. And your life will never be the same again. Amen. Above all, because of this decision, every prison, every chain around your life has been broken. Amen. I speak that in Jesus' name. Amen. Go with him. Let's put our hands together for our brother. Hallelujah! Before we close, lift your hands up. There is a soul after your life. There is a soul that wants to bring shame and reproach. There is a soul that wants you in prison. But today, the Lord is going to switch position. Any soul in your life, any uncle in your life, 
any queen or king, may they go into that prison in the mighty name of Jesus. Clap your hands and pray. That soul that is after you, that soul that is after your child, that soul that wants to put you in prison, any soul in your family that wants you to be weeping, Lapaka Satayaba. Landa yaba kasata yaba. Yende lepo kosoto no yaba. My God. Kalabo sota yaba baba. In Jesus mighty name. Because of time, one more prayer. When you are in confinement, you don't do what you want to do. You are remote control. And somebody wants to put you in confinement or has already put you. And I love the way prophet will say it. Somebody has pegged you. When you are pegged, you can only go this far. And today, may that chain over your life be broken in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and pray. Any confinement, any cage, any confinement in your life, in your business. My Because of time. I don't know about you, but it is my right to live long. So I will continue to preach. It is the right of Mami V to continue to be the first lady of Restoration Chapel. In, that is settled. It is her right. It is the right of prophet to go around restoring lives. Now, I don't know about you. But if you know it is your right, I want you to take something before God. What is it you want that right to come to pass? It is your right. Yes, you have come out of prison. But where are you going from here? It is your right to be a doctor. It is your right for that prophetic word to come over your life. It is your right. It is your right.